What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today I'm going to be doing my match review, match reaction and match analysis of Manchester City's FA Cup semi-final 3-0 victory over Sheffield United. Good win for Manchester City, we'll digest all the talking points in just one moment. But before I do crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, then do subscribe to my channel, it's free, we're on that push to 30,000 subscribers, so any help towards that would be fantastic. Also don't forget as well, social media links, they're in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. TikTok link also in the description if you want to go and follow me on there. Also don't forget as well to go check out my email, that's in the description if you want to go and hit me up for the sponsorship for any videos or any general business inquiries leave a thumbs up 100 likes is the aim importantly do let me know your thoughts in the comments below what you made of this victory for Manchester City finally this video is sponsored and brought to you by GT Player you can go and check out their link that's in the description they very kindly sent me this chair that you've seen featured throughout the season it's a limited edition Manchester City chair they've got loads of chairs that you can go and check out so go and check them out link is in the description remember use code JSGC5 for 5% off your order so let's crack on with this video we're going to start off first with a big talking point and that is Manchester City and the rotation and the changes that we made. Now, I spoke in my preview about this game, about the potential of Manchester City making potentially nine or ten changes to this game. Pep said in the build-up to this game, the players, they're exhausted, they're tired, they were too tired to celebrate going through against Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarter-final. So I was expecting City here to ring the changes. And the team that we went with was actually much stronger than what I was expecting. Now, in my preview, I had some comments people saying no way City start with that rotated team it's a disrespect it's disrespectful sorry to the cup it's disrespectful to Sheffield United Man City will go strong and I was like I'm not so sure with Pep's comments changes are going to get made it's all about what changes we've got the problem we have is Man City a lot gets made about our rotated squad and our depth our depth isn't in my opinion as strong as what it used to be our depth also isn't quite there in numbers in my opinion and so because of that City can't make as many changes as what we once used to be able to make and Pep Guardiola has said he likes having a smaller squad a closer squad a squad that can achieve the problem we have is you have games coming in thick and fast competing on all fronts it becomes very difficult to find a good balance for the team to rotate and have enough energy for the important players in the important games. And this game, to me, was an ideal chance for us to rotate. And we haven't rotated as much as what I was expecting. Now, what I did see from this game, in my opinion, is Manchester City utilising the fact that we can make five substitutions. I know we only made four substitutions, but as the weeks go on, I have a feeling City aren't going to rotate their team as much against anybody because if we was, it would have happened in this game and it hasn't happened as much as what we was expecting and because of that, I think Man City are going to utilise their bench to try and rotate their team. If Man City are 2-0 up in the 75th minute, changes will get made to give 15 minutes of important rest to the key important players. Man City will look to try and kill games off as quickly as possible if it can be killed off in the first half then early in the second half changes can be made if we're 3-0 up by the 60th minute again changes start to be made and that I think is how Man City are going to try and rotate their team because if not by the time we get towards the end of the season we could end up with severe burnout in our squad but what we do need to keep an eye on here I know it's going against what I normally say which is taking things a game at a time I'd be keeping a very close eye on Arsenal. Now, if we can beat Arsenal on Wednesday night, and I'm very confident that we can, if we do, I can see Arsenal with the run of form that they're in. If we beat them, that's no wins in four Premier League games. I can see them with the difficult fixtures they've got coming up, dropping more and more points, to a point where I'm hoping if City do beat Arsenal, we can continue our good form. They start to drop form as well, and then we may end up with a little bit of leeway towards the end of the season, and that could be crucial in particular for the Champions League. So, that's the squad and everything sorted. City ended up starting this game with Ortega Moreno in goal, who has kept a clean sheet in every single round from now, uh, right back to the third round of the FA Cup for Manchester City, uh, in the FA Cup. And Man City faced the prospect um, for, I don't think it's the first time ever, but certainly for the first time in the modern era of football, becoming the first team to win the FA Cup 
without conceding a goal. Clean sheets against Chelsea and Arsenal at home, clean sheets against Bristol City away, against Burnley at home and against Sheffield United here in the semi-final at Wembley as well. We face Brighton or Manchester United in the final. They play today so we'll know who we're going to face on June 3rd at Wembley. So looking forward to that and we could make some history. I think only one other team has ever kept a clean sheet for a run throughout the FA Cup and I think that's Preston North End right back uh, in, in the 19th century. So yeah, that's how long ago it is to, to be achieved. And as I said, the first time it can happen in the modern era. So we went with a back three. Kyle Walker on the right-hand side, Akanji going through the middle and Laporte getting a full 90 minutes. Now, we still don't know the extent of uh, Nathan Ake's injury. So Emeric Laporte could be getting a lot of minutes coming up very soon. Didn't really put a foot wrong in this game. So pleased with his performance and probably is going to get the nod uh, against Arsenal. Now, very interesting is, is the midfield. Now, I saw some Sheffield United fans commenting on my preview video, enlightening me that their midfield without Tommy Doyle and James McAtee providing a little bit of finesse to their midfield, a little bit of energy uh, and just that touch of extra quality there. Uh, one Sheffield United fan summed it up, which made me laugh, was we've got the dinosaurs starting in midfield. So maybe Pep Guardiola smelt a little bit of blood there and thought to himself, you know what, I'm going to go strong in the midfield. Ilkay Gundogan starting in defensive midfield ahead of Calvin Phillips. That's a big, big call. A very big call. Uh, and I won't do any confidence boost for Calvin Phillips. Maybe it's a tactical thing. Maybe it's Man City want to sell him. I don't know. Ilkay Gundogan starting in defensive midfield gives some important rest for Rodri. De Bruyne, again, another player that's looked knackered, gets a full 90 minutes of rest here, which is brilliant. We went with Bernardo Silva on the right-hand side. He looks so good. He's getting to a point where he may well, on that right-hand side, become undroppable for Manchester City. Bernardo Silva really finding his form and getting another 81 minutes uh, here in this game uh, with uh, Rico Lewis coming on for Bernardo Silva. We saw Gundogan go off in the 75th minute with Calvin Phillips coming on just to get 15 minutes now one of the unsung heroes played a very impressive game and I know everyone's been questioning him Sergio Gomez how composed how good did he look in the midfield Pep Guardiola just experimented an FA Cup semi-final with the squad and Sergio Gomez coming up trumps he looked so calm and collective good with the ball making things happen it was good to see and I have a feeling between now and the end of the season Sergio Gomez could well find himself getting more and more minutes at Manchester City. And going off this performance here, I'm encouraged by what I've seen. And what I want Sergio Gomez to do now is take confidence from that performance and apply himself the next time he does get opportunities. Done himself a world of good, in my opinion, for Sergio Gomez. Putting in a really good performance. And maybe, just maybe, Man City finding that Sergio Gomez better playing in midfield rather than at left back or with a back four or playing at centre back or playing in holding midfield. Maybe just giving him a bit of creative freedom in the mid uh, midfield might just be what we are looking for. Julian Alvarez playing alongside or behind Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland starting in this game was a very big call. Again, he got just over an hour uh, under his belt. Phil Foden just coming back from injury. I suspect over the next week or two that he'll start to get some starts. Thought he might have started this game and give him 60 minutes, but uh, there we go. Jack Grealish, another big call. I wasn't expecting to see him start. Uh, Cole Palmer again, uh, not featuring in this game. Another big call as well. Um, so yeah, and uh, some important rest for some other players including the likes of Ruben Diaz and John Stones which is what we like to see and the final player I want to speak about Riyad Mahrez scored a hat-trick now I wanted to say that in the build-up to this game Manchester City and the players that were going out in particular some of the squad players and Riyad Mahrez of late has become a squad player for Manchester City I wanted them to stand up tall to make it count and say I should be starting against Arsenal. I should be starting against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. I should be starting against Real Madrid at the Etihad Stadium to reach the Champions League final. I should be starting in the FA Cup final. And if we get to the Champions League final, I should be starting in that match. Riyad Mahrez scores a hat-trick. To me, Riyad Mahrez should be rewarded for that. He should be starting against Arsenal. The problem is, how do we accommodate that? It means a midfielder has to be dropped, because to me, Bernardo Silva is undroppable. So if we're not going to play Bernardo Silva on the right wing, he's going to play in midfield to allow Mares to come in. So someone misses out. And Riyad Mahrez, if he doesn't start against Arsenal, he's incredibly unlucky. Riyad Mahrez scored a hat-trick. He sent us to the FA Cup final. Riyad Mahrez is the reason why Manchester City won this game. 
Riyad Mahrez stepped up and took that penalty. Stonewall penalty in the 43rd minute on Bernardo Silva. Mahrez stepped up. Erling Haaland's our penalty taker. Riyad Mahrez says, I'm confident. I want that penalty. Riyad Mahrez misses that penalty. Riyad Mahrez never takes a penalty again for Manchester City, in my opinion. He steps up, not only scores, he scores with the perfect penalty. Right into the corner of the goal, right into the side netting. The keeper, if he goes the right way, 10 times out of 10, cannot save that. It is the perfect penalty. If I am teaching somebody how to take a penalty, I put that Riyad Mahrez penalty on repeat until somebody can repeat that. It's perfect. It's a perfect penalty. A brilliant goal for Riyad Mahrez. A great time to score just before half-time. Gives Man City the advantage and that all-important first goal. And then, second half, Mahrez... Right place at the right time. Uh, presses, forces the mistake. Sheffield United back off, back off, back off, back off. The goal looked a bit comical. Mahrez tucks it away. And I think that's a big lesson for Sheffield United to take away from this game. That you're playing the high line, you're chasing the game. Man City will hurt you. And once City's got that second goal, jobs are good. And, and uh, Sheffield United's defence for that goal all over the place. So I think they'll take and learn from that and, and they'll build towards that going into, into next season and when they ultimately end up getting promoted to the Premier League, which, to Sheffield United, not disgraced themselves. 3-0 loss. Burnley lost 6-0 at the Etihad against us in the quarterfinal. Uh, and uh, Burnley currently sitting in first, flying in the championship, trying to secure to become champions. Didn't do it yesterday. And Sheffield United, I think they play Wednesday night against West Brom, have the chance to seal promotion to the Premier League. And that, to them is important, and they've lost 3-0, it's no disgrace to lose to Manchester City 3-0, they can take confidence from that to go into that game and seal promotion to the Premier League, and I am very confident that they will do so, and I am confident when I say to Sheffield United fans and to the club, we'll see you next season, looking forward to it. a couple of good games, in particular a good trip to Bramall Lane, can't beat a good trip to Sheffield, one of my favourite cities in the whole of the United Kingdom. Now, City wrapped up the deal five minutes later. Riyad Mahrez, again, right place at the right time. Ball gets pulled across. He's there in the penalty area with space. Keep there. Fodderingham gets a hand to it. Goes into the bottom corner. 3-0. Jobs are good and we're into the FA Cup final. Now, the only other thing I need to speak about is the fans and all these Twitter accounts and these people that don't go to football games commenting on the crowd and the attendance. I think it was just under 70,000. Firstly... 70,000 people went down to Wembley, a 400-mile trip for Manchester City to take on a team from the Championship. And I mean that with no disrespect to Sheffield United. They brought down great numbers as well. So fair fucking credit to every single one of them fans that went down there. Why are they being ridiculed on Twitter? Two brilliant clubs taking their fans down. This is City, what, over 20 times we've been to Wembley since it's opened. It's not a novelty to Manchester City fans. It's more just a good day out with your mates, and that's how it gets treated. We'll sell out the FA Cup final, but to me, why is this match at Wembley? Why is this a 400-mile round trip? Why is this not at a neutral venue up north to make life easier for fans in a cost-of-living crisis? And when the fans ultimately don't sell out their heads, I mean, both fans, sets of fans took down over 30,000 fans, which is an incredible number. So well done to both clubs for taking that number down. Why is it being ridiculed? This match could easily have been at Hillsborough, could have been at Ellen Road, it could have been played in the Midlands, it could have been played at Villa Park, it could have been played at St James's Park, it could have been played at Old Trafford, at Anfield, at Goodison Park, and all them grounds would have sold out because it would be something new for a lot of the fans. And instead, just takes a sting away playing at Wembley. And to me, FA Cup, semi-final, neutral stadium. It needs to be at a neutral ground to make life easier, particularly during this cost-of-living crisis. FA Cup final needs to be at Wembley, needs to be on a Saturday, needs to be the only game that day, and needs to be at 3pm. And even that's not going to happen, because it's going to kick off, what, half four, five o'clock, half past five? Why? FA Cup day is Saturday, three o'clock, Saturday, three o'clock. It's a prestigious thing, English football. Ah, anyway, rant over, City go through. We're into the FA Cup final, buzzing for that, looking forward to it, and hopefully tick off another trophy we're not mentioning that t-word 
So, thank you for watching, everybody. Much appreciated. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you do enjoy the video. 100 likes is the aim. Also, don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on. Social media links, they're in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. Email also in the description if you want to go and hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. TikTok link also in the description. I want to say a big thank you to GT Player for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you guys all again for the next video up tomorrow. We've got a transfer update before we have the big build up to the big Arsenal game on Wednesday with a preview out on Tuesday. So I'll see you then. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now. <laughs>